Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this tutorial, we're going to cover DS grids and how to use them. But first, this video has been live now on my Patreon page for some time. That's patreon.com forward slash RM2K Dev. So once again, a huge thank you to those supporting RM2K Dev over there. And if you're interested in helping fund the creation of more videos like this, then please consider donating a few dollars to help pay for the expenses that go into the content creation. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. So a DS grid, as it says in the uh, Game Maker manual, is essentially a two-dimensional array. However, there's some awesome properties that we get in using a DS grid that we don't get from using an, a conventional two-dimensional array. That's the fact that this is a data structure. That allows us to store DS maps, DS lists, DS priority queues, DS queues, DS stacks, other DS grids within the grid. This is fantastic if you're doing something like an inventory, where you have a complicated object being stored at a specific position of your inventory. So, zero, zero is a potion, you know, zero, one is a sword and it needs to have properties under it that are like this sword is equipable by this class and that class so that you can do logic and program program things around that later in your game for this example i'll be doing a very simple inventory it's nothing uh nothing special we're just going to be storing strings inside of a ds grid representing items but i'll show you how it works and i'll show you how we use it so with that said, I'm back here in my uh, DS tester project and I've got to create a destroy and a draw event as usual. Now my create event, I'm going to create a grid. Now once again, this is storing, this is basically asking Game Maker to reserve us a place of a space in memory for our grid to exist. So I'm going to say my grid equals DS grid create. It's going to ask us for a width and a height. I'm just going to use three by three. So this is a three by three grid. Now you can resize these grids at runtime using the DS grid resize functions. Uh, we're not going to go into that in this video, but like I said, take a look at the manual, just search for DS grid and you'll find all of the functions that DS grids allow us to use. Um, now we need to store some data in our grid. Now you can do this line by line, item by item. So you could say DS grid add and you could specify the grid, so my grid, you could specify the X and Y positions, you know, like zero, um, zero, zero, and then the value that you want to store there. That's one way of doing it. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do it inside of a for loop. So I'm going to say for XP, that stands for X position, equals zero, while XP is less than three, because our grid is counting from one. So we're saying that we want it to be three spaces wide. That's one, two, and three. Now, because we're counting from zero, we need to go zero, one, two to address those positions. So less than three is the condition we use to count to the number two. Then I'm going to say XP plus plus. That just means count forward by one number. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it inside of itself. And then I'm just going to tab that in. And now I'm going to change those X's to Y's so that we have a loop for the Y position. So now we have a three by three loop. This is going to loop through our grid. In here, we can say DS grid add, and then we can specify the grid. That's going to be my underscore grid. The X position is going to be XP. The Y position is going to be YP. And the value that we're going to store is item. I'm going to put a little uh, colon. I'm going to say plus string XP plus string YP. There we go. So now what we've essentially got is uh, a grid full of items. I say that in, you know, uh, quote marks just because it's technically just strings, but it's going to show you how to store stuff in the grid. Now I'm going to copy this whole section because we'll need it later. Now when I destroy event, I am going to destroy the grid. Now we have we have to destroy the grid because we've asked Game Maker to reserve us some, some memory. Now if you were constantly creating these objects into your game, asking for memory, but never giving it back to the system, you're eventually going to run out of memory and your game's going to crash. So we can release that mem memory by saying DS grid, and then I think it's destroy. Yeah, it is. There we go. So now I'm going to say my underscore grid. And there we go. We've essentially said when this object destroys, we want to destroy the grid as well. Now, finally, in our drawer event, I'm just going to paste this code that I put back in here and get rid of the middle part because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to show you how to access the values and pull them back out of our grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say draw text because I know these are strings. The X position is going to be XP multiplied by 96. That's just saying that we want these to be uh, every 96 pixels. So we can say 0 multiplied by 96 is position 0. 1 multiplied by 96 is 96, etc. Uh, and I'll say YP for the Y position multiplied by 96. So this will display in a nice grid. And then the string that we want to draw is going to be DS grid. 
and we want to find the value, so it's ds grid get. Now this asks us for three properties, that's the id of the grid, the x position, and the y position. So I'm going to say my underscore grid for the grid that we want to use. The x position is going to be xp, and the y position is going to be yp. Now, if I finalize my function with the parentheses, the brackets, and save, let's give this a run, and hopefully what we should see is a grid of items on our screen. So what you can see here is we have item 0, item 10, item 20, and you can see these are counting. So the first digit is x, 0, 1, 2, the second digit is y. So the y position is 0, 0, 0 for the top row. For the bottom row, sorry, for the middle row, the y position is 1, 1, 1, and then obviously x is 0, 1, 2. And then for the final row, it's 2, 2, 2, 0, 1, 2 for the x position. So you can see we've essentially created a grid of items. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, you can use these grids to store DS lists, DS DS maps, DS queues, other DS grids within each item position. So it doesn't have to be a string. It can be anything you want it to be, which is especially useful if you're doing uh, an inventory. You could also use grids to control animation states, which I will show in another video in the future. But for the sake of uh, demonstration purposes, this is just supposed to be a simple explanation of how a DS grid works. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.